Today, the Mercury Marine destination takes us up to the Land O'Lakes area of Eastern Ontario. After a run up to one of the many small lakes in the area, Charlie joins up with friend Chris McMillan for a fun day on the water. Smallmouth bass are the target today, and the two have the ultimate challenge of deciding what will be the best technique for the day. Be prepared with several, but it's always wise to let the bass themselves show you what the winning combination will be. With so many techniques and variations available, keep adjusting until you get it just right. Stubborn clear water bass this week on Fishful Thinking. Fishful Thinking is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Princecraft boats dominate the waters. Seaguar Smackdown Performance braided lines. And Ram trucks built to serve. Water conditions are brought to you by Humminbird Fish Finders. Get the big picture. Even small waters can blow up fast, but you can be more comfortable. Smooth out your ride with Smooth Moves shock absorbing seat suspensions. Nice little fish on the wacky worm. Yeah. In this clear water, Chris, I know you can weight these things, but they can see this so far away. I, I like always using the lightest possible weight I possibly can and letting it drop as low as possible. We don't have a high wind and these things can see, well, we can see bottom in 20 feet of water so they can see this coming down all the way to them. It is so nice oh, and clear here. Let's see if I can. Oh, he's all right. Do you win? There we go. Nice way to start. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Really hooked well. Grab my pliers. Love these hooks. And even though there's not a lot of weeds where we're fishing, I like using the weedless hooks because if you let it sink right to the bottom, it keeps it up out of the snags. So when you get these little fiber guards on things, it, uh, it just keeps you out of the snags. Now, see, looking at that, you uh, you hook further forward. I usually go right in the middle. Uh, that's not where it started. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the fish pulled that down. So, okay. yeah. And you know what? With these, you can rig them any which way. You watch them at the side of the boat. I've had guys rig them Texas style, Chris, yeah. Yeah. and put the nail weights in the back, and it'll actually shoot backwards under the weeds. Oh, okay. So, even though they say, here's the way you rig a wacky worm, there's just so many variations of this once you start adding weights and different hook configurations. Yeah, because out on this lake, there's not a whole lot of, a lot of weed areas that, that, you know, you might want to shoot it under the weeds and let it go. Yeah, but with the weed guards on it, if I let that sink to the bottom, those little fiber guards will stop it from yeah. getting into the cracks. Okay. And it doesn't, doesn't de deter at all from, from the fish. Nice. Yeah. I'm quite impressed, Chris. There's a lot of room in this boat. This is not a big Prince Craft boat, but there's a lot of room in this. Well, 16 foot, um, 16, eight, somewhere around there. Um, we've known each other a long time, Charlie. And as you know, I've, I've had a lot of different boats over the years. For me, for Jenny, um, the odd time Pat and I, um, this is ideal. I can't beat this boat. It's the fit and finish of this boat right from day one has impressed me. And this thing's 10 years old, give or take 10 years old. I don't take on any water. The only time I use the bilge pump is when it's at the dock, at, you know, and it's pouring out at night and I go out in the morning and flip it on. Yeah. The finish is amazing on this boat as far as I'm concerned. I, we've talked and you know I'm thinking about getting another boat. I'll go nowhere but Princecraft. Uh, you know that is an uh, aw awesome just, testimonial and know. I know you've had the high-end bass boats in the past yep. and for you to say you'd rather fish out of this even bass fishing than some of those boats that, that that's a strong statement I can take this boat anywhere I can go deep I can go shallow I can on a windy day I can go across this lake at 35 38 miles an hour 
and it just runs well. A riveted boat, and you've never had a drop of water come in? Never, never. And you're rough on your equipment. Oh. <laughs> and that's an understatement. <laughs> so that's really impressive. I have never known been known to be gentle on anything, Charlie. <laughs> like I said, that's an understatement. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I don't think we'll worry about the net on this one, Chris. Okay. I was thinking maybe. I only ask once, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> I'll keep you fishing. And I'm going fishing. Much better fish, Charlie. That's nice. Yeah. And I and just I just retied my leaders, so. And shallow. Yeah, that one is. Wow. Up you come. Bottom lip. These hooks are just beautiful for them. Nice. Well done. Nice fun fish. Nice average. There you go, sweetheart. Wacky worm's really easy to rig, and having a wacky worm tool makes it even better. All you simply do, grab your worm. Now these set the hook spike worms have been fantastic for me. Very soft, very scented, and these five inch ones seem to be perfect. So roll one of these little rubber bands down to the end of it. Insert the worm roll off the band and in a pinch if you run out of these or you can't find them even a split ring works really well and it adds a little bit of weight to it so even a, the appropriate size split ring that will grip that worm really works well and with a weedless hook I like the weedless hook or any hook actually just insert under the ring some guys won't even use the ring but it helps save the worms a lot because without that ring you're gonna rip off a lot of worms and that's all it is and when this drops, you've got both ends of the worm wobbling as it drops down. And like I said, these set the hook spike worms, they have such great balance to them. And the fish just see that dropping down. And in this clear water, I try to stay as light a weight as I possibly can. You can start adding nail weights in the head of these worms, but they can see this from 20 feet away. And the longer I can keep that tantalizing them in a slow drop, the better. You just have to be patient but this works fantastic. Closed captioning is brought to you by Mercury. Power and dependability you can count on. I get a lot of use out of my ram boxes. They lock, they're great for anything you need quick access to. They even have lights inside them. Just beautiful for anything you need quick access to. And on wet, miserable days, because they've got a drain hole at the bottom, I can actually put my dirty boots and wet rain gear in them and wash them completely out. Now, waterproof bags are great, but anytime you're dealing with moisture in the boat, whether it be a rainy day or sometimes as simple as putting three or four wet lures back in the box, make sure you dry them out every time you get home. It's amazing what a little bit of moisture will do. Dry them out and you won't have rusty hooks the next time you go fishing. Conditions today are brought to you by Revo Sunglasses. See what others don't. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad, Another Charlie. Decent little fish. Yeah. Anything following it? Uh, no. But this wacky worm just keeps working, and you just got to be patient and let it drop so slow. Use a good four or five foot length of Seaguar fluorocarbon as a leader for my braid. It's got a little shorter since I've retied now. These. These wacky worm hooks are just beautiful and sharp, and I believe my leader's still fresh, so... It's a fat little I fish. I think I can lift you in. Another nice little fun fish. And I can't lip you because of where you got that hook, buddy, buddy, buddy. Till I get a better hold of you. 
Yeah, you aren't going anywhere. And then even when I think a hook is sharp, I always sharpen it up even more. There's no substitute for sticky sharp. Sometimes that fish gets stuck before you know what's on. Even with sensitive braids, sensitive rods. There's no substitute for a sharp hook. And I think he saved my worm. But you can see that's where those rings come in handy. If that was in the worm, worm would be gone. I'd be putting another one on. Now I can just put it under that little ring again. Slide it back into place. Maybe find a fresh spot on that worm to slide it up so it doesn't rip through. I'm good to go. Not a bad fish. Not a bad fish, and it's so simple to work. Chris, you, you use these more than I do. You got me using these more in smallmouth than I used to. For the longest time, Charlie, all I ever used up here was wacky. Yeah. You know, um, and they love them. You cast it out, have patience, let it sink, let it do its little dance down. I just twitch, twitch to keep the line tight, and you just wait, and you'll feel that tick in the line, or all of a sudden it'll just take off on you. Ooh. That was a nice hit. Kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> that was a nice hit. He went sideways on that one. So you finally gave up in the tube. I did. And went to a wacky worm with these spike worms. Yeah. I figured if they were working for you. You I were had, stubborn. I, I was stubborn. I, <laughs> I had no choice. You were, you were relentlessly trying to make that tube work, and they're just... I was going to go into tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you bass fishing, you go prepared. We got tubes rigged up. We got drop shots. We got the wacky worms. You got to let the fish feel it out. What do the fish want? Good start. And again... Uh, good start for you, anyway. Uh, anything's a good start for me. <laughs> Oh. Well, he uh, he took three shots out of Charlie. And well, then it's I, substantially uh, bigger than that one. Yeah, yeah. I think. And I you got went back. To, you went back to your tube. And you know what? You gotta you gotta keep going back and forth to see what the big fish are gonna want. If they keep hitting one thing, stay with it. But you, you might gotta wanna grab the net. You gotta Charlie. keep checking. You gotta keep checking. Ready? Well, I'll I'll I don't think it is. I'll bring him to you. I don't. It's, he's no. not ready yet. I, you got to get his head up. I can't take a stab at him. Take your time. There we go. Nice. nice. There you go, sir. That's why we have several things rigged up. We just keep going back and forth between them and let the fish decide. It's always let the fish decide. Look at that. Perfect hook. No, I, uh, I felt him tap it a couple times, and then I just let everything go slack. Yep. And then another quick little Let twitch. him come back. But boy, is he eating well. Nice one. Oh, finally. Good job. Thank you, sir. I'm still going to stay with what I'm using until the fish decide what they want. Right now, maybe tube. I'm still getting hits on the wacky worm, but you got to keep mixing it up. That's fishing. Fat. Good. Good stuff. You really have to have patience because you want to work this faster, but you got to let it get down. <laughs> and they see it. I mean, I'm looking at this with these Revo glasses. I'm watching this fish. I can see the bottom in 18 feet of water. They can see this as soon as it hits that surface. That's a decent fish, too. Um, not bad. I don't know if I want to. Okay, I will lift this one. He's, he's borderline not liftable. or not. Ah, there we go. Any bigger, Chris, you get in the net. <laughs> nice. Another nice quality fish. So much fun. Just so much fun. And I can't believe the size of the, even the little ones. I'll hit that. Just They'll just T-bone the whole thing and, and yeah. just suck the whole worm in. I, I can't believe the little ones will hit this too. But even on the subtle hit, uh, you know, the pickups that, that they do from time to time, these rods with the sensitive tips, you feel everything. I was going to ask you about that. You like this Tatula rod? Oh. And these LT reels are so light, well, light and tough. Yeah. And it's just a beautiful balance. You can fish all day. It doesn't even feel like you're holding anything. 
20 pound test smack down, very thin line, that helps them drop down. It's still 20 pound test, it's extremely thin, but it's, uh, it's all sensitivity. Another one, Chris. The wind's really picked up. Oh. I put a little nail weight, little Freedom Tungsten nail weight in this one, just so it gets down a little quicker. Right. Oh, yeah. Decent fish. Now, I just retied my leader, so I think I can lift. 15 pound Seaguar, I've joined it to my braid with a double uni. So. Well, if you need the net, let me know. Yeah, it should be all right. Nice fish, Charlie. Should be borderline. I wouldn't normally be doing this if we didn't catch so many fish. <laughs> Real nice little bass. Put you back down here. And with the nail weight, you can't even see it in here. But I'll show you exactly what I've done with the nail weight here. Let me grab another worm. I've got them ready here. All I'm doing, I've got one pre-tied right at uh, the flat end. I've got one already pre-done with the ring on it. It's just a little Freedom tungsten nail weight. And all you do, the flat end of the worm, straight into the nose. Push it in as straight as you can. And you can experiment with these wherever you want to put them along the worm and you'll see that changes the flutter and the drop of the worm but that little extra weight, it's getting me down a little quicker in this wind and gonna get my presentation to the fish a little quicker before the wind picks me up and moves me out of the way. But real handy, real handy. Anybody else home? There we are. Better fish? Uh, I don't think so. Eh. Pee wee. It's another number. Let's see if there's anybody else home in there. Numbers wise, I'm getting my you know what absolutely handed to me on a plate. <laughs> you are <laughs> relentlessly trying to stay with that tube, which I respect because that's been the big fish lure year after year. It's just is this is not the time. All right, buddy, you can stay down. You've already been out twice. And you're... Uh, yeah. Good thing it's a single. You can do that without crankbaits. Nice. Oh. That makes up for the one that fell off. Yeah. Beautiful, and that little nail weight maybe made the difference. Oh, thank you, sir. Boy, that's fat. Isn't that a beauty? Wow. <laughs> so much fun. Numbers and size. Yeah. Quality, quality fish. So what did it take to make you go to a wacky worm now with this... Uh, Guilt. With the, uh, <laughs> the spike worm. Charlie Ray's See, guilt. How many times can you not... How many times can you see me catch fish and keep using that tube before switching to these set the hook worms? Well, honestly, Charlie, because of the amount of timber that's submerged here um, and over the years. That's what you're going to use for switching. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. Because I fished here on a regular basis and I've been hung up so many times. Look at that. And. She ate that, nice. crushed it, absolutely crushed it. Oops, Beauty. Sorry. Fishful Thinking is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Princecraft boats dominate the waters. Daiwa rods and reels. And Ram trucks 
built to serve. Tackle today, 15 pound test Seaguar 100% fluorocarbon leader material. Daiwa Ballistic LT light and tough spinning reels. 20 pound test Seaguar Smackdown performance braided lines. Daiwa Tatula rods with X45 bias graphite construction. Set the hook five inch spike worms, now with bait fuel. Freedom Tungsten 132nd ounce nail weights. 100% protection from UV, A, B, and C with Revo sunglasses. Hummingbird Helix 5 fish finders with GPS. Minn Kota trolling motors with autopilot and digital maximizer. Prince Craft boats, proudly made in Canada. And the Ram 2500 with 6.7 liter Cummins diesel engine. There we go. Nice. It's as easy as that. When it doesn't drop fast, they just come over and eat it. They're just smashing that thing. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Awesome, huh? <laughs> this is awesome.